Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Tuesday, July 3rd, 2018. I'm Donna Wilkinson Keynes. The bill has been well a uh, third time. And pass. The Nevis Island Assembly today, Tuesday, July 3rd, passed the Tax Administration and Procedures Amendment Bill 2018. The object of the bill is to amend the Tax Administration and Procedures Ordinance, Chapter 6.11N, and for matters related or connected to it. The move of the bill Premier and Minister of Finance, the Honorable Mark Brantley, opened the debate on the bill. Notwithstanding anything in any other law enforcing St. Christopher Nevis, where any taxpayer A fails to furnish tax returns in accordance with Section 10 of the Ordinance, or B fails to pay taxes as they become due and payable for three consecutive tax periods, or C is convicted of an offence under Section 60 of the Ordinance, the Comptroller may publish in a newspaper circulating in St. Christopher Nevis the name of the taxpayer and the reason for publishing. And at paragraph C, inserted in a new subsection 6 as follows, and so there'll be a new 37.6, Mr. President, which reads, a person who fails to pay tax, being the whole or part of the remainder of any tax due or payable under this act, by the due date shall be liable to a penalty equal to 10% of the amount of the tax due. He also spoke to the intent of the bill. We have to get the revenue in order to satisfy the ever-growing demands of our public and the ever-growing demands of a modern society that we're seeking to build here on the island of Nevis. And it is for that reason, Mr. President, that we're asking our citizenry to rise to the occasion. There are too many of our people who simply refuse to pay their taxes. And as a consequence, the administration is put under tremendous pressure. The Minister of Finance called on the members of the public to be responsible citizens and pay the necessary taxes and levies. It's unfair to the old man in Brownhill to have to go in and pay his taxes when so many around here owe millions of dollars and refuse to pay. And so we are saying now that it is high time that the public knows who they are. We hope we don't have to use it. But we're putting the mechanisms in place so that if it comes to that and the recalcitrance continues, that there is a mechanism available to the Inland Revenue Authorities to name them. Meantime, the Navy's Freedom of Information Bill 2018 also received its second and the third readings and was also passed. According to the mover of the bill, the Honorable Eric Evelyn, Minister of Information and Information Services, the bill is intended to promote transparency and eliminate secrecy with regard to the activities of public authorities. You have to submit the request in writing to the public authority. And of course, once that request is submitted in writing, the authority will grant or deny the access within 30 days. After that, Mr. President, if the application is granted and applicable fees are paid, then the actual access is given. If the access is refused or delayed by the public authority, the applicant may seek redress, what is called an internal review. And if the review is of a decision by the head of the public authority, then the matter will be referred to the commissioner. Of course, previously I spoke about the establishment of the office of who we call the commissioner of information. And of course, the applicant may also refer to the commissioner himself or herself. The bill allows the citizens and residents the right of access to official documents of public authorities subject to limited exceptions and for related matters. The Freedom of Information Act, Mr. President, allows for the full or the partial disclosure of previously unreleased information and documents controlled by any public authority. The bill sets out the exemptions. Documents affecting personal privacy and containing personal information, general information received in confidence, cabinet documents, things like international relations documents, documents affecting enforcement and administration of the law, documents affecting legal proceedings. Of course, we know that court proceedings very confidential, and so court proceedings and so on will not be accessible 
to members of the general public. The Nevis Freedom of Information Bill was passed unanimously. Meantime, two resolutions also came before the Nevis Island Assembly today. One seeks to formalize the completion of the land for debt exercise with the St. Kitts, Nevis and Gwilla National Bank Limited. It is not new borrowing, but it will seek to formalize the existing $142 million debt already on the books. The other resolution seeks an overdraft facility at the St. Kitts, Nevis and Gwilla National Bank Limited with a limit not exceeding $5 million for the period not exceeding January 1st to December 31st, 2018. It will provide bridging funds for the day-to-day -day operations of the Nevis Island Administration. Still to come? The end of the job fair. We hope the youths would challenge us, would charge us to find them employment, to make them employable. We'll give you the details after this break. Welcome back. The Department of Labor in the Nevis Island Administration will be hosting a job fair on Thursday, July 5th at the conference room of the Social Security Building at Pinney's. Chief Labor Officer Gary Leiber told us the objective of the fair. At the end of the job fair, we hope the youths would challenge us, would charge us to find them employment, to make them employable, to help us guide them towards their career goals to find out and interact with them what exactly are the skill sets. Lybird notes that the fair is targeting persons between the ages of 16 and 25. We realize that the youths, specifically the youths of Nevis, is considered as a vulnerable group and we now are doing our part in preparing them for the world of work. So we are imploring for persons to use this opportunity to interact with us at the Department of Labor we have persons from the private and public sector who would also do presentations about social security, about occupational safety, and other issues which we deem important in preparing our Nivision youths for the world of work. Library is encouraging potential employees and employers to utilize the Department of Labor's public employment service. The Department of Labor, we have what we call a employment agency or uh, public employment service where we act at that as a liaison between employers and potential employees. Um, we would refer persons to employers and we would ask employers to consider certain employees. So we realize that some persons who we haven't filed may not be what some employers are not looking for. So we are reaching out to the general public, in this instance, the youth, to utilize our services to come and fill out an application at the Department of Labor so we could steer you in the right direction. Minister of Labor in the Nevis Island Administration, the Honorable Spencer Brand, is expected to declare the job fair officially open. Thursday's job fair will begin at 9 a.m. with an opening ceremony and will conclude at 4 p.m. The 34th celebration of Child Month in Nevis concluded on Thursday, June 28th with the Staff Development Day on the Early Childhood Development Sensitization Policy at the St. Paul's Anglican Church Hall. Education Officer responsible for Early Childhood Development is Florence Smith. -Anne. Research has shown that an early childhood education is an important investment in the future. And here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, 
with the members of the early childhood sector of the Ministry and Department of Education, take that statement very seriously. As advocates for young children, we know that children start learning before they attend school. In fact, the first three years of life are critical when it comes to the development of a child's brain. That is why it is so important to support infants and toddlers and their families in the early stage of development. The session covered early childhood policies and guidelines and was attended by early childhood workers from both public and private institutions around the island. Shelley and Harper, the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, Early Childhood Development Specialist for the Eastern Caribbean, spoke about the Sustainable Development Goals and how early childhood plays an important role in them. They have placed early childhood as pivotal and critical if countries will achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. They're saying that what we do now with our young children will change, whether it's positively or negatively, but we, we're hoping that we're going in a positive direction. But whatever we do now with our children, however we support their de development, will have lasting impact. Chief Education Officer in the Ministry of Education on St. Kitts, Dr. Theresa Esdale, made a presentation on policy sensitization. Immediately following the presentation, the early childhood educators gave their feedback and comments. Child Month activities for the Federation concluded with a parade to the streets of Bastia on St. Kitts on Friday, June 29. Nevis Electricity Company Limited NEVLEC customers are advised of a scheduled power outage to facilitate vegetation management. Consumers are advised to take note of the power outage for Wednesday, July 4th from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Areas on the Charleston 2 feeder will be affected. They include Prospect, Cherry Gardens, Long Point, Farms, Bath Village and areas in close proximity. Customers are advised to take every precaution to safeguard electrical equipment at all times of interruption and restoration to the electrical supply. Neblek apologizes for the inconvenience that may be caused by the outage and remind customers that in each case, service may be delayed to later than the time specified. For additional information, call Neblek's customer service at 469-7243, 469-7245, or 662-5799, or its emergency service at 469-9100, or 662-5811. That's it for this edition of the Navy's Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, thank you for viewing.